So Apple's on the verge of releasing a pretty big update, firmware update for their Apple Watch series devices, in particular for runners. And this new update includes three and a half new features. I'll explain the half in just a second, including a pretty massive shift in the way they measure, or at least go ahead and account for running power, especially for those doing longer trail running events or other sort of ultra type events. Now this will be a pretty short video because it's really not all that complex to cover. Uh, the first of the three and a half changes is that number one, they'll now on track mode, we'll go ahead and start snapping to the nearest 100 meters if you're within five meters of that point. The idea being that you don't have to press that lap button at exactly that, that moment that you cross that little line in the track there. Instead, it can be within five meters or about 15 or so feet of that line. This concept isn't something that Apple came up by themselves. In fact, the Wahoo rival GPS watch has had this since they launched track mode of a year or two ago, whatever it was. Uh, and it's nice to see other companies carrying it forward because it is kind of pretty handy just not to deal with worrying about getting that exact moment in time on the line there. The next change is something that actually came in 9.3, but many people might not have noticed it, is also to do a track mode, is that in the workout summary at the end, it'll now show you your per loop splits, which is kind of cool. So each time it completes that loop around the track, it'll do that. And again, that's just for track mode, which then gets the last notable small change before we get to the final big one, uh, which is that the track mode is now available in a bunch of European countries. See the list right here on the corner. This actually isn't tied to 9.4. It just happened to be like released at the same time. Uh, still doesn't include where I where I live here in the Netherlands, but maybe, maybe someday it will. Um, so anyways, if you're in one of those countries, it now works immediately. Uh, remember, Apple is using Apple Maps data for all that track stuff. So unlike, for example, Garmin and Koros and uh, Wahoo, uh, they use algorithms where basically you run you know, like one to two loops of the track and then boom, it's locked in forever on that particular track. In the case of Apple, they make it so that you could just step onto the track the very first time uh, and go ahead and have instant access to track mode without any sort of calibration loop. Uh, there's pros and cons to each. If you live in a country that, uh, you know, Apple supports, then it's a pro. If you don't, then it's a it's a con, which would be like basically all but six countries in the world. Uh, so, you know, yeah, it is what it is. But the last thing is cool, and it's it's kind of Apple admitting they might have been sort of wrong the first time around, which has to do with running power and how they account for walking. And I hear some of you already saying, hey, wait a second, it's running power, not walking power. And yeah, but that's not the point of running power. Running power is supposed to be any sort of pedestrian power, uh, foot powered power, if you will, whether you're running or walking. And so when Apple launched their running power algorithm this past fall as part of watchOS 9, uh, when you walked, it went down to zero. So your running power went to zero even though you were still making forward progress. And now if you're a road runner or doing you know, track intervals, that little bit of running power while you're you know, walking between intervals is honestly throwaway. No one really actually cares about that scenario. What they care about though is more the trail running and steep terrain scenario. So in that case, if you're at 10, 15, maybe even steeper 20% inclines, you're still gonna be doing the same amount of effort going up that steep incline. But up until now, Apple's running power algorithm would have shown that as zero. And this is something I found last fall when I was in the Alps and climbing over these steep mountain passes, you know, kind of like up and through some rocks and stuff like that. And you're not really running anymore. Most trail ultra runners, uh, when you get to a certain steepness, aren't actually running. They're just doing their best to kind of hike over the top of that. Uh, it was showing effectively zero power or no power at all. And so if you wanted to normalize your effort across, you know, both actual running and then just steep terrain that's close to running, you couldn't do that uh, in Apple's algorithm. And all the other companies out there did support running power across running and and walking and hiking and things like that, but uh, not Apple. That is changing now with 9.4. So to demonstrate this, I'm gonna kind of give you three scenarios here. And of course, before we go too far, the usual caveat that number one, there is no scientifically agreed upon standard for running power. Uh, scientists don't agree on what should or should not be included in uh, running power, in particular like different uh, biomechanical elements that should or should not be included in that particular calculation. Uh, and then two, as a result, you'll see differences between different companies. Uh, each company has a different algorithm that they arrive to slightly different values. It is what it is at this point in time. So we're just gonna set that off the table like it's been set there for a, a few years now. So what you see right now on the screen is a workout I did uh, before I upgraded to 9.4. So what you can see there is that each time I walked in those intervals, basically it flatlined the Apple Watch power. It's like the tealish color at the very bottom there. You can't see it because it's, it's on the bottom of the graph. It's zero, right? It's completely zero across the board. The other units all show some amount of power as I was walking between the intervals. So now I upgrade my watch and you can see the next uh, interval session there and across the board, now I have the Apple Watch joining, uh, in this case, the other watches showing me at kind of a baseline power level as I'm walking.
walking between each interval. Uh, and of course, it's you know sometimes a little bit wobbly, which makes sense because after you're done recovering from interval, you're also a little bit wobbly. But the point is, it's showing effort. Uh, and I just wanted to kind of baseline here before I showed you kind of the, the hill sort of stuff. But the point here is that you can see clearly it's showing you running power while you're walking. And now to demonstrate this on a hill side by side between an upgraded unit and a non-upgraded unit, uh, meaning that the watch OS is upgraded versus not, uh, you can see this graph right here on this hill nearby. Now I don't have a I don't have big hills here. I've got a little bit of a, a little hill with a little bit of steep that I can make work for this demo, but it'll kind of illustrate the point pretty well. So I started off walking, uh, and you can see that at the very beginning there, that yellow line, that's the one showing the older unit. Uh, and you can see how it's flat lined along the bottom. And then about 30 or so seconds into it, uh, I went ahead and started running. Uh, at that point, you can see both lines kind of joined each other. Then you see that dip in the middle right there? That's where I went from running to walking. Uh, and you can see it bobbles for a second. In this case, I was walking kind of fast, uh, and it wasn't that steep, so it wasn't like a 20 degree hill. Uh, so you can see it actually catches up for a little while, and it's all right. So I thought, you know what? Let me just try this again. So I reset things there, and then you see that next big yellow line across the bottom. That's where I'm walking a little bit slower this time up this hill, but still exerting power. You can see that there, in that case, the older firmware flat lines across uh, versus the newer firmware uh, kind of catches up. Now, as I get in that steeper section there, that's where you see that older firmware wobble a little bit. It kind of, it doesn't really hit it quite right. Again, kind of an artifact of that older algorithm not really being tuned and making mistakes here and there, just like throwing out data points that don't actually exist. Now, I know this is a bit of a messy graph, but it illustrates the point really, really well. Everything you see in the yellow there is points where the older algorithm got it wrong. And I'm using wrong all in kind of a relative sense here, meaning it's not capturing some sort of running power correctly, uh, versus the Apple Watch on the newer firmware handle that just fine. Now, we don't know when exactly this firmware will drop. It's in public beta now. I think it's even public beta 2. So you can download it yourself if you want to. You first need to download the uh, iOS update for your phone. And then from there, you can go ahead and update your watch. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward update in the grand scheme of things. It includes a bunch of other non-running features as well that I don't really care about too much. But uh, you might care about those. And I'm sure you can Google and find out about all those cool features somewhere else. In the meantime, though, go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. With that, have a good one.